Our FMC is really known. And also make sure you Hello and welcome into this week's edition of AFMC TV. We're glad you're joining us. Well, the holidays are right around the corner. We are on a quick run downhill into the holiday season. And what do we do to help maintain our weight, not gain, maybe even lose a little as we go into this tricky time of the season? And joining us to help answer some of these questions or give some good tips and hacks is JJ Mayo. JJ, thanks for joining us. Thanks. To, I'm glad to be here, Michelle. Okay. Here we are, holiday parties. They are right around the corner, and this year we're actually having them. Right. You know, the last two years we really haven't. Right. So, um, how do we keep that waistline from expanding? Uh, well, this and that's let's uh, you know. Always when I have these discussions, I always start with the, the big picture, the perspective. Mm -hmm. And so, as you go into the holidays, you know, we know that most people will gain, and so a lot of times it's just that make your goal to to not gain you know just to try to maintain just yeah just to try to maintain where you go where you are when you go into the holiday season and then also remember you know these are holidays right we have thanksgiving we have christmas day not weeks and it is a very slippery slope <laughs> It is. Well, let's tackle um, Thanksgiving first because that's okay. the closest. Okay. And we're talking about, my goodness, Thanksgiving at parents' houses, at in-laws' houses, at f you've got Friendsgiving right. that's taking place a few weeks before right. Thanksgiving. I mean, how do you keep it all in check? Because the chances that you're just having one yeah turkey dinner um, is probably pretty slim. You may be looking more at like two, three, four. <laughs> oh gosh, if you go to two, three, four in a day or a week, or what, what are we talking about? I mean, it could be. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, the first thing is, if you are gonna go to some of these dinners and parties, try to bring something that you know is healthy yeah. so that you will have something that maybe is a little lower calorie um, option than to have the big spread. Because sometimes when we have this big spread, we, we let ourselves go. And so just be aware if you're gonna to go to parties, bring bring something that you can eat that you know is gonna be healthy, a healthy choice. Let's let's start by how we prepare in the first place, right. Right. right? You don't go to these parties hungry. Right, that's a good point. Yeah, no, you don't. You, you wanna make sure you have a little something before yeah. and like I say, and then bring in something along the way is good too. And what about alcohol? Because oh. that's gonna trip you up. Okay, yeah, so what I would recommend during the holiday season is try not to drink your calories. Yeah because you're gonna see that with the, you know, the apple vinegar cider with the what eggnog later as we get uh -huh. into Christmas. That martini and so, mistletoe. And the, well, well, and, the alcohol, <laughs> and the alcohol, you gotta be careful with that because what the alcohol does, it lowers those inhibitions. Yeah. And then that will cause you to get hungry and eat more than what you normally would. And so just be careful. And you, can you have a drink during the holiday season? Absolutely, yeah. but you just can't overdo. So as we are preparing uh, to go to any of these holiday right. parties, what do we need to do at home? What, how early should we be looking at right. having a little snack? Right. And and what kind of snack is the best right. to kind of get us through? Where right. we can still have a little nibbles yeah. here and there, yeah. but we don't have to feel like we have to load up our plate and keep going back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so some of the types of snacks would just be something like nuts would be a good option. And you wanna have these like maybe an hour, hour and a half before you go. Okay. And that's gonna keep you full as you get to the party because most of the time, there's going to be like a few minutes of just kind of hanging out and chatting before you get to the before you get to the meal. So yeah, about an hour, hour and a half before you go. And what about dr uh, drinking water? Uh, you can drink some water. Yeah, drink some water. And and you know the bottom line is what you may want also do is if you know you're going to have this big meal is go out and exercise before you know before you get there. So then maybe you feel a little better about having a few more calories. Okay. So. Burn it before you yes. intake it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> okay. Um, and then what about when we are hosting and having the party at our house? Right. Um, as a as someone who enjoys entertaining, I always kind of want to sample everything before anyone else gets oh, there. Oh, goodness. And so that can get you in trouble sometimes too. Yeah. No, I would, I would again, you got to maybe taste a little bit of it, but you don't have to have you know, a big serving, you yeah. know, of all the foods that you prepare. And you shouldn't put it all on you. I mean, you should have the people maybe that are coming to your house. Maybe you have some kind of potluck thing where people are bringing food and ask them to bring some of the healthy. Or what you could do is put a list, a menu, and have them 
say, this is what we're going to have. What do you want to bring to the party? Yeah, that's a good and, idea. And, put, and, and you add the healthy foods to the list. And what about sweets? What about cakes? What about pies? We can still have them, right? You can still have them. Now, here's what I would say. And with anything regarding the holidays is you want to eat foods that maybe you don't eat on a regular basis. Like yeah. like for me, it's sweet potato pie or yeah, a sweet potato casserole. I don't eat sweet potato casserole much at all, but maybe once during the holidays, I'll have some sweet potato casserole. Yes. And, I, and feel okay about it. That's what you got to do. You got to own it and, and plan, right? <laughs> maybe you, you know, eat a little lighter breakfast because you know you're going to have the the big dinner uh -huh. um, and and but you it's okay to have that you just can't do it like you said at four different holiday meals yeah g generally not I mean I guess you could oh. but then you are gonna bust your waistline yes and yes. it makes January's resolutions a little tougher mm. then um, anything final a lot of a lot of communities will have turkey trots little right. five fun 5k runs right. family things so yeah. again if the weather's conducive yeah, I, I think that's the biggest thing. Get outside and, and, and burn off some of those excess calories that you're eating during the holidays. Okay. JJ, anything else? That's it. I, I appreciate the time. And, uh, you know, I think you can uh, get out there and at least maintain and maybe even lose a little during the holidays. But but it, it takes discipline. Something. Yeah, it takes yeah, discipline. It does. Discipline and consistency yes. and doing the right things. Yes. Okay. JJ, thank you so much. Thank you. Joining me now is Rebecca Dennison with Dermatology Group of Arkansas. Hey, Becca, how are oh, you? Good, thank you. Good to, good to have you here today. So skincare cycling, I'm intrigued yes. by yes. this topic, and I may not be calling it by the correct name. You right. may hear there may be another name on the street that, that refers <laughs> yes. to the same thing. What are we talking about? Yes, so it's this kind of newer phenomenon about using products that you may not be able to tolerate every day. And so um, that's kind of in turn changed into the skincare cycling. Okay. So you can kind of think, I think the two main products we're gonna see are exfoliants. Okay. So harsher exfoliants a lot or, or majority of people can't use those every day. Mm -hmm. The other thing we see a lot are retinase or retinols. Okay. So retinols are more of what you buy over the counter. Retinase are more prescription strength uh, creams that do a variety of things. They help with aging, fine lines and wrinkles over time. Um, they're used to treat scarring and pigmentation and acne, okay. but they can be harsh on the skin as well as exfoliants. And so there's this thought that if you kind of cycle your use throughout the week, then you become accustomed to the product where you can tolerate it. So yes, so the thought, the biggest way that I see this is with Retin-A's. So okay. I'll have patients come into clinic and they're like, well, I, I can't use that cream. It just dries me out. It, it makes me peel. Um, it, I can't do it. And I ask them how they use it and they're, they're trying to use it every night. Mm -hmm. And so in reality, a lot of people can't do that. Mm -hmm. So the thought is that you start off using it two or three nights a week. So you pick, you know, Tuesday, Thursday or Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Mm -hmm. And those are your nights that you use that product, okay. whether it be a Retin-A or an exfoliant. And usually your skin can tolerate it that way. Now, if you can use it every night, that's great. But for most people, it's two to three nights a week and that's it. And so that's this newer kind of phenomenon is you're okay. basically cycling those harsher products so that you can tolerate them. And are you doing both? Uh, like, like if you're using the exfoliant Monday, Wednesday, Friday, are you doing retinol A or B Tuesday, Thursday, or is it pick one? and yes. figure out the pattern that's best for you? That's a really good question. I think if you're doing a prescription strength Retin-A, we really don't recommend using exfoliants. Okay. Um, Retin-A's are they're more harsh that you can kind of think of them like a natural exfoliant. So most people don't do an exfoliant with a Retin-A. Okay. Now, if you're doing a retinol, which is more of what you're gonna see over the counter, a lot of times you'll be able to use an exfoliant with that. Maybe on the nights you don't do the retinol. Okay. so. That's very interesting. It is. And it probably helps to, I mean, it, it gently kind of makes your face a little more immune, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if you will, yes. to the products that you're using. Yes. That's right. And, you know, a lot of times um, people will take breaks from those products in the summer because yep. they're in the sun. And um, so fall, winter is a really good time to restart those products if you're not using them. And so easing into the product can really make a big difference instead of just jumping in full force you know, using it every day of the week. Okay. So this may be a silly question, but um, the men in our lives. Yes. I mean, 
are they doing this too? Are they, or, or maybe not, are they doing it, but should they be doing it? Yes. I think as far as retinase, really everyone should be using a retin-A. There's really not a reason you shouldn't be. Okay. And there's so much in the literature about the, the products, um, you know, really help with aging and sun damage and kind of reversing the sun damage. And so anyone can use it. Um, I really think men and women both mm -hmm. should be doing it. Okay. Speaking of sun damage, of course, we've come out of a really trying summer, very yes. hot summer. Um, what are you seeing in the clinic as far as procedures now? I mean, we're going to blink and holiday parties are upon us. Right. And um, you may, people may be noticing brown spots. Right. And, and so they want to look their best at these parties yeah. and for pictures yeah. and things. Exactly. So what's what are some of the things you're seeing? Yeah, I think so. The way that I kind of talk to patients about it is the least to most aggressive types of procedures that you can do. And so um, a lot of times those correlate with downtime. Um, and so, you know, in the summer, we don't really see a lot of cosmetic procedures. I mean, there's definitely some things you can do in the summer, but it really amps up in the fall and winter. And so some of the lesser aggressive procedures would be chemical peels. Um, chemical peels are a really nice way to kind of take off some of that sun damage, exfoliate the skin, help okay. with, you know, texture and tone. And um, they do a lot of kind of surface benefit. Um, bleaching agents are another uh, kind of treatment that you can do, especially for brown spots. Um, in the fall and winter, there's an ingredient uh, called hydroquinone. That's the main ingredient in those types of creams. They're usually prescription, mm -hmm. um, but those can help fade brown spots over time. Would those brown spots then come back though? Yes. Okay, so this yes. is just a temporary. It's temporary and really all chemical peels, um, bleaching agents, lasers, if you get back out in the sun after you do those procedures, the brown spots are going to come back. And so you're really always going to have to be doing something for maintenance. Okay. Um, but like I said, fall, winter is a great time to do it. And yeah. um, there's a lot of really great laser procedures now that treat brown spots and pigmentation okay. um, and a lot of things that don't have a lot of downtime. And so that's one of uh you know, a lot of the problems with aggressive lasers is downtime, but there's some lighter lasers that you can do for pigmentation that um, really are pretty quick procedures and you're good to go the next day. Not bad. So, yeah. When we are talking about brown spots, because I, I, I want to go back to that for a minute, what, how do they develop? Do they develop over time or is it just something that, you know, boom, there it is. Yes. You turned a certain age and <laughs> yes. voila, they showed up to the party. Yeah, I think it, so it depends on what type of brown spot it is. So um, there's pigmentation change you can get on your skin called melasma. That is a, a brown kind of coloring to the skin, usually from sun exposure and, and it's due to hormones. So we see it more in females. Okay. Um, you're gonna see it in pregnancy a lot. They call it the mask of pregnancy because you, you tend to get this kind of mask across the face. Oh, interesting. Yes. And so that is more hormonal, more in females. Um, then you get into sunspots and those are usually from cumulative sun throughout your life. And okay. so, uh, you know, the standard freckles, you can get at you know, any age, sure. but when you start to get larger sunspots, it's usually due to sun exposure throughout your life, you know, bad sunburns as a kid. Um, and so a lot of it has to do with the amount of sun exposure you've had, and then also genetics play a big role in the type of brown spot you get. Okay. Um, and so all that kind of goes together uh, to create those. And yes, a lot of brown spots, there's things you can do to get rid of them. Yeah. But, uh, you know, some people are just really prone to, you know, they go outside for an hour and then boom, they have, <laughs> you know, freckles and all that, so. Okay, all right. Um, is there anything else that you would like to add yeah, I think so. Really, if, if you're looking at skincare um, products, things you can do at home, I think a Retin-A or, or a Retinol is a really easy additive that you can do to get a lot of benefit over time. Um, and, and it's very inexpensive. And so that's an easy thing. And then, you know, really talking to your dermatologist about other procedures, um, you really want to make sure you're doing something that's right for your skin. Mm -hmm. Um, yes, there's, a, yes, there's a <laughs> lot of procedures out there that 
aren't safe for darker skin types. And um, so you just want to make sure that that it's the right thing for your skin and what you're trying to address. Because like with so many things, what might be right for you may not that's be right. right for me and vice versa. Yes, and that's right. And so you've got to have those conversations mm-hmm. so that you don't damage or end up yes. hurting yourself when you're trying to take care yes, of yourself. That's right. <laughs> and unfortunately that can happen. So yeah. it's something to address. Definitely. Okay. Well, Becca, thank you so much for coming in. Thanks for having me. And thank you for joining us today. We'll see you back here next week for more AFMC TV.